Welcome to the Canoga Park Youth Art Center's new series, Art Inspiration, where each week we'll look at a different artist and their artworks, and we'll be inspired by them to create an artwork of our own that's inspired by a different artist. Today, our artist that we're going to be inspired by is a man named Mark Chagall. Let's look at some of his paintings. Mark Chagall is from Russia, and much of his artwork is inspired by his Jewish background. A lot of his paintings, too, are also inspired by his village where he was raised. So you can see that our friend, Mr. Chagall, his paintings may have shapes that we recognize, but they're almost dreamlike. You know how in a dream, things don't always add up? So for example, the rooster that's hanging out next to our married couple, it's the same size. They almost appear to be riding the rooster. So he uses his imagination and dreams as inspiration. Now, when we go down to this one here, this is probably his most famous painting. Most people recognize this one. And you can see, again, we can recognize some shapes, but some things are upside down. She's upside down. So again, kind of like a dream. Now, he does these flying people, and here are a couple examples of his flying people. So do people really fly? No, but this is his interpretation. And they're based on a lot of fond memories he has from his childhood in his village. This painting here, this is gonna be the one that we're using for our inspiration today. Do you see that it's in the winter? And I think it's important that we consider the seasons when we decide what kind of landscape we wanna make. So I thought today we might make a winter landscape with a flying person to honor the artist Mark Chagall. Here's my drawing, my line drawing that I've done. Let me point out a couple things to you. As always, a landscape's most important line is the horizon line. That is this line that separates the sky from the land. So you have to put that in. It never goes at the bottom. It can go anywhere around here. The higher it is, the more room you have. I put in my houses, but I put in really simple houses. I just showed the fronts of the house. I didn't get crazy with perspective, but look how some of my houses are overlapped. It's okay, and look, this house is kind of half missing. It's okay to have things overlap. I added icicles, and I also made the bottom of the houses look like they have snow banks up against them. Look at my pathways. See how they're skinny here, and they get fat toward the bottom? That's because this is farther away and smaller, and as we get down here, it's closer to us, and so it gets fatter or wider. I want you to look at my trees. Remember how I've talked about trees before, how it's a bunch of V's? V, 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 V. Trees, V, it rhymes, kind of easy to remember. And the trees don't have any leaves on them in the winter. Now I know you're seeing this flying person and you're saying there's no way, Donna, I can do that. But I'm going to walk you through some easy steps so that you will be able to make your own flying person. Let's take a look at how we are gonna make our flying person before we begin because I know you'll see how simple it is. Step number one, kind of almost a complete rectangle, only we're leaving that end open. So you can see, it's just a rectangle, a long rectangle. Now here, kind of think of them as roads. This is the off ramp. So here's our one leg that we just drew, and now we're drawing a bent leg. But see how it kind of looks like an off ramp for a road? So now we have our two legs. Now we're gonna go over here, we're gonna add a couple of things. We're gonna add a square, easily done, for the shirt, and we're gonna throw on a couple of triangle shoes. See how they're pointing down? Because he's flying. Now, I know his arms, don't get nervous. We're just gonna have a long and skinnier rectangle that comes off for his top arm, and then his bottom arm is like a little V. Again, like a little off ramp off of a freeway. Just kinda of hangs down below. We're getting close to the end now. Now with this one, all I've done is I've added my head I put a very simple face on it. I put some very simple hands. Look, if you don't want to draw hands, draw them as mittens. Look, thumb, fingers. Sometimes when you draw a hand as a mitten, they're a lot easier to do. And then at the last bit, I just kind of smooth things out. I put my hair on. I kind of smooth out, give myself a little line there. 
make my jacket come a little bit further from my pants, and erase some of the other lines. So really rectangles, rectangles, triangles, and circles. That's it. So let's begin our drawing. Remember what I said about the horizon line always being the most important and first line that goes in. So I'm going to draw some hills here. But I don't want them to be barren hills. I'm going to throw some trees. You've probably seen me do this before. So I'm going to throw some trees in here. Maybe there's another tree line in here. And trees are all different, so I'm just kind of making this wiggly line to show kind of my, it might be some pine trees back there. Now I'm going to start with my houses. So my first house has like two parts to it, a rectangle and then the square that comes off. Now I'm going to put my roof on as a triangle. And remember, those can kind of come off the edge. They call those eaves. And now for this roof, here's a trick. Are you watching? It comes right out like this, and then it comes down like that. So this is the roof for this part of the house. I'm going to throw in my doors, some windows. Remember, you don't have to have tiny little windows. You can have good sized windows. Now I'm going to draw me another house. And I don't want them all on the same line. I'm going to kind of spread them out. This one's just a square with a triangle. See how my triangle goes a little bit further? Door. Make sure my door is tall enough for a real person, not like a cat door. Throw in some windows. Maybe there's three windows across the from this one. All right. Now let's go to our next house over here. This has got a house behind it. So first we're going to put in our main house. There we go. Put a little roof on it. And remember what I said about overlapping? This house has a littler house behind it. And when you put something behind it, it makes it look more 3D. So here's that. This needs a door, some windows. And you can do this any way you want. You could put wreaths on the doors if it's around the holidays. And now we have this other little partially cut off house here. So we're going to make part of the square. Remember, you can have things come off your page. That's okay. And there's my roof. Put in part of my door, part of a window. Now I need the pathways that go out to the street. Remember what I said. They are skinny up here and get fatter up here. Same thing on this one. Same thing on this one. Now if I wanted to show snow banks, that just means the bottom of this is kind of bumpy. Bumpy, bumpy, bumpy. You guys probably haven't been in real snow, but when they plow, there's all these kind of snow banks everywhere. All right, now our trees. Remember how I said V's and trees, they rhyme. So I come up here with the, my trunk of my tree. There's snow all around the bottom. Here's my first V. Now I'm going to put another V in there. Another V in here. Now I can put my last V. There you go. Here's my last V on this one. I'm going to put a little V on this one. And I want you to notice how my branches are getting skinnier as they travel away from the tr trunk of the tree. This is the fattest part down here. Then it gets a little fatter up here, and that is the skinniest part. Just put in a couple more trees. V's, V's, and trees. Here's my first V, second V, V, and V again. Let's make a V come up here. And the rest of the tree is behind the house. One more tree over here. If I have a little bit of room, but again, it's okay for the tree to go off. Here's the bottom of my tree. There's the trunk. And we're just going to have that go off. Here's my V. Here's another V. Here's some more V's. V's everywhere. I can even put another branch going off that way. The icicles are easy. They're just a zigzaggy line. Some of them are long. Some of them are short. And they come right off the roof line. Like here's our roof. I'm going to make my icicles. Some are long, some are short. And they come all the way down on all sides. All right, now we got the flying person. Remember, I told you not to be nervous about this. Here is the first rectangle. Remember? It's open on one end. And the other one bent like it's an off ramp. So it looks like two roads next to each other. All right? Now I'm going to put in my square for my coat. And I have my coat is falling a little bit because gravity is pulling it down, so I have a little bit of extra room there. Here's my square. We need two triangle shoes. Shoe number one, shoe number two. So far, pretty easy, huh? Now I got an arm. It's coming out this way. 
we can bend it a little bit if we want. And remember I said we have that other arm, kind of like an off ramp, going out this way. I'm going to put in our mitten fingers. Whoops, my thumb got a little crazy there. There you go. And you can even put lines in here so they look like the finger separation. Thumb, fingers. Now I just need to get my head in here. Oval, not round. Eye, eye, nose, mouth. I'm happy because I'm flying. And now you can have the hair flying out. Even if it's short hair, it can be flying out. There we go. Now I would go through and erase some of these lines. There's the sleeves. And there we go. Moon, presto, Mark Chagall, flying people. Now if you wanted to paint a winter scene, you wouldn't need a whole lot of paint, right? Because snow is white. So I painted this to be nighttime. That's another thing kids don't do too much of is a nighttime painting. So here's a winter at night. And if you've ever been in the winter at night, it's so quiet and peaceful. I used blue and a little bit of black just for a tiny little bit of shadow along my pathways because snow has footprints and other inconsistencies in it. I used a marker to get the detail of my houses and the detail of my trees. And then I just popped my flying person in here. I used the marker to help show where the pathways were. You'll notice there's lights on and lights off. So if you have any paints and you want to do a winter scene at night, this is a good option for you. Well, I hope you enjoyed our arts inspiration of Mark Chagall. Thanks again for joining us. And if you do the project and you like your work, please share it with us. We'd be love to see it. Thank you.